Insider of The Bunch joins us every Wednesday to share insight from their world on Insider. Today on K-Pop In, we've got Brian Ju in the studio. Hello. Hello. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to speak right now or wait till later or something, so I was trying to be quiet. You know, <laughs> I like to behave. You like to behave. Because I'm, you know, if, if you know who I am, a little crazy sometimes. <laughs> A lot of times. A lot of times. So I'm trying to behave on, on radio, guys. Okay. That's who I am now. <laughs> so, Brian, for yes. anybody who is living under a rock, please mm-hmm. introduce yourself. You know, the very, like, formal way of doing that. All right, guys. Uh, my name is Brian Ju. For those of you who don't know who I am, like Isaac said, um, I debuted in a group called Fly to the Sky back in 1999, ages ago. So I'm pretty ancient. Uh, <laughs> and not only uh, did I do music, I also do some acting. I also DJed before too as well, MC'd. Uh, I run a flower shop, a CrossFit gym. I'm also Korea's Strong by Zoom ambassador. So I'm doing a lot more things than I expected to do in Korea. Exactly. Yeah. That's why we have you here today because our segment is called Insider and you have yes. to be the insa, the insider of everything. And you pretty ah. much just explained why you're here. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, you're Okay, you're I just wanted everything. to introduce myself in detail so a lot of people. Because nowadays, a lot of people are very nitpicky and detailed. They're like, you forgot this, you forget that. You do this, you do that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I totally forgot. But then sometimes when you introduce yourself like that, like I don't normally talk to myself or talk about myself to people when I meet somebody for the first time and say all the things I do. Because then it sounds like you're just name dropping or bragging what you do for a living. But since we're on radio and you asked me what I do, so that's why I did it. Now, out of all of the jobs you have... Mm -hmm. If you were to just like name drop one job, like when you first meet somebody at a party or something casually, hi, I'm Brian Jew. I'm. I'm Korean American <laughs> from New Jersey. Uh, and I actually tell people I just do, oh, I, do I, few, I do a few things in Korea. That's it. Okay. Especially when, because, you know, we, our background, we started off in entertainment. Mm-hmm. I don't say, oh, I work in K pop. I work in entertainment. Because that sounds a little cocky. Like, mm. oh, I'm, I'm the ish you know i don't i can't curse so i'm saying that's like the the edited version but you know i don't want to sound like that so i'm just like um i work i have uh, a few jobs okay yeah. um so let's go back to your crossfit gym yes so when did that kind of start because i know that you love to work out but mm. like to have a love for working out and then to actually make the jump of investing into a gym like that that's a whole different level so mm. like what kind of sparked that basically i just Got deep into it, whereas, and um, like I started CrossFit just to you know stay fit, because mm-hmm. the normal, uh, regular gym life was kind of boring for me. Going and doing you know curls and mm. and bench presses got a little boring, repetitive. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It was just wasn't, just it wasn't was for me. For you, yeah. So then finally, a friend of mine, Cody, to be exact, uh, exact, he's probably listening maybe from wherever he is. Uh, he was like, hey, try CrossFit out. So I was like, all right. I went to the gym to watch first. I mm-hmm. saw what they're doing, and I said, oh heck no, that is not for me. <laughs> Are you trying to kill somebody? Uh-huh. You know, and I talked to some other celebrity friends who were introduced to it at first, like Son Young. He was like, Ho Young was like, oh, 절대 안 돼. You can't do this. You oh. know, it's not meant for celebrities. Oh, because you die. can get hurt. You can get hurt. It's, oh. it's too extreme. And, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, so I kind of like backed away for a little bit. And then I'm one of those people when I get introduced to something, I still give it a try. Mm-hmm. And I remember that day after I saw the class, without even thinking, I was like, oh yeah, I'll come back one day and do the class. And I was like, oh crap. Now I, I get to keep my promise. Oh, okay. So you're one of those people that just doesn't say it like very casually. You yeah. stick to your promises. Exactly. So okay. then I saw my friend Cody out and about with his wife one night and he's like, hey, you still haven't come to the gym. I was like, all right. So I came back, <laughs> regular workout clothes and I did a class and I, no lie, went to the bathroom. I ran to the bathroom mid-workout to vomit. Oh, wow. That's how hard it was. Yeah. And then that's where it kicked in and said, oh my gosh. This is what I'm meant to do because working out is supposed to make you, you know, it's supposed to push it's you, supposed to, take you yeah. to that dark place. Uh-huh. It's not supposed to be, oh, mm, I'm done. A few curls. Mm, finished. Uh-huh. No, you're supposed to sweat. You're supposed uh-huh. to get into a place where you're uncomfortable. Uh-huh. And that's what CrossFit did for me. And then I realized I was learning. I was progressing. And it was a lot of fun. And the uh-huh. community is great. The people. Uh-huh. A lot of people make jokes and say, it's a cult. Blah, blah, blah. And I say this, I'm like, all right, even if it is a cult, like people say, at least it's better than being in the wrong type of cult, like Mm. people who are into drugs or Mm. weird seances, you know, and sacrificing people. No, I'm not into that. Mm. This is a fit, healthy cult, Mm -hmm. if I want to call it a cult. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, like-minded individuals who have a great time. And the next thing you know, a friend of mine, a few friends of mine were like, yeah, let's invest and open up a gym together. And I was like, 
sounds fun to me. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's, it's it's like being a big kid. Mm-hmm. You know, because the CrossFit gym to me is like our playground. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like for kids back in America, like Chuck E. Cheese. You know, mm-hmm. when you're a kid, that's all you want to do is like, mm-hmm. mom, let's go there for my birthday. So having your own CrossFit gym is the same idea for a grown up, where you mm-hmm. go have fun, work out, stay fit, and you get to still eat what you want. Mm. So that's why. Yeah. Yeah. So you have just a place to run around, and I've been to the gym where he. Had, oh, you have. I when you first opened it, I tried to sign up, but there's no classes at the time frame that I was looking at. Oh. Um. So yeah, it's literally like he designed it to be like a big playground. Yes. So like there's nets everywhere, there's ropes everywhere, like you run around the place. It's just a really safe padded place to run around and be <laughs> weird. Um, <laughs> Which he does. Yes. You, if you see his stories on his social media account, whenever he's at the gym, he will start writing what he's going to be making people do for the day. And he has this smile on his face. Of well, just first like, of all, it's going to hurt. I don't make people do it. And you're going to love Well, I know, but you write it down. Yes. And I can see how happy you get with the amount of pain that they're going to be in. Because uh, the funny thing about it is I do the workouts as well. Exactly. Because i got to test it out. Like, all right, are people going to be able to do this? Are people going to enjoy it? Are people going to hate it? Do I have to you know, change things up. Mm -hmm. And then I tried, I'm like, okay, it killed me. Mm -hmm. And I know how much I sweat it. And that's the main thing. If you're going to work out, you got to sweat. Oh, of course. If you don't sweat, you leave the gym, you're dry. You're like, oh, did I even work out today? That's Mm -hmm. how you feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to feel it the next day. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you brought this up earlier too, Strong by Zumba. You became the ambassador. So what's this? Like, how did you also get into that too? So first of all, we have to explain what Strong by Zumba is. And Strong by Zumba is a revolutionary new type of uh, high intensity interval training. Um, You know, it works on strength. Okay. Mobility. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the movements are very martial artsy. Oh, okay. And um, it's like a total body workout and works on every aspect of physicality. And a lot of people are, pop- are questioning me now, like, oh, you do CrossFit and Strong by Zumba. It's like, what's the biggest difference? Well, I mean, CrossFit, there's more, you know, Olympic lifting, mm-hmm. uh, gymnastics. And this isn't that. You don't actually need a barbell, dumbbell to do Strong by Zumba. And another, uh, I guess... People, the confusion that people get is Zumba and Strong by Zumba. What's the difference there? Okay. Zumba is more dance related. Yeah, which is what I'm pretty much thinking yes, of. Yes, a lot of people okay. when they think Zumba, you have more dancey movements. Mm-hmm. Um, as in, like Strong by Zumba, less dance, more martial arts. Oh, okay. But it is with music. Oh, it's okay. It's really high intensity. So for certain people who are, uh, I guess, overwhelmed with the gym and, you know, throwing weights around. Uh huh, uh huh. Try Strong by Zumba. Okay. It'll kick you in the butt. Okay. It'll make you sweat, but you feel great after. It's so it's like your cardio pumped up to like its max. Exactly. And I love how you went into like full ambassador mode there and you just like be able to bring out all those facts. Well, that's the thing with me is I'm, if I'm going to be an ambassador for something or believe or just get hired to promote something, I'm not going to be like, oh, you're going to pay me well? All right, then I'll promote it. No, I have to try, try it. it. Yeah. If then I you have like, to like it, it, no matter how much you pay me, I'll be like, you know what? I believe in the system. Mm-hmm. I believe what you're... You know, you're trying to sell to me and I want to help promote it. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. So we've talked about a stay fit aspect, which I feel a lot of our listeners right now, even through our V Live, are saying constantly that you look so fit. You look so amazing today. Oh, thank you. But also, (laughs) you have a flower shop. Yes. You have a flower had, business. Had. Had. Okay, so the flower business. So what the is this? The flower business I do have. Okay. Flower shop we closed. Okay. Over, over a year ago. So basically, it's one of those things where, to be honest, I never thought that I would ever be in the flower business. Um, a few years back, five years ago to be exact, um, this one, one Zhang name of a flower shop, this owner, she and my manager at the time were friends. Mm-hmm. And a few years before that, I had gone to her flower shop to stop by and get some flowers for a friend's housewarming because I didn't want to go empty handed. Okay. And then uh, she wasn't there at the time. Her worker was there, her, one of her staff members. And I took a selfie with her. And then my manager asked me, he's like, do you remember this flower shop? I was like, yeah, of course I do. He's like, do you, you want to meet the owner? I was like, why would I want to meet the owner all of a sudden randomly? He's like, well, she wants to do a collaboration project with you, hopefully come up with something. I was like, but why? I mean, I've never worked in the flower business. He's like, well, I mean, people know that you're a neat freak. You like, <laughs> you like. I love own. how you put that out there. Yeah, people, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. My friends know me that, like that. They're like, you're cleaner than most people. Like, I'm one of those guys who will clean the house a little bit before the cleaner comes so the cleaner knows how I want it to be. <laughs> you know, I'm very organized. You I know where organized. I want my things to be. Yeah. But with that said, um, 
Yeah, basically, she came up to me and said, you know what? I noticed in pictures of your apartment, you always have plants and flowers and stuff like that. And she was like, and I heard that you do it yourself. I was like, yeah. So like, well, would you be interested in doing something together, collaborate? I'm like, sure. And then I thought about it. I was like, I don't want to just do one thing and just end it there. I was like, if I enjoy it, why not keep going on with it? Mm -hmm. So I learned a few, you know, how to pot certain things and plant certain things. And then it got to a point where I was like, oh, that's kind of fun. And it made me feel like I was a kid again because growing up in America, we all live in houses. Mm. And I remember when I was younger, I would always help my mom and dad, you know, pull the weeds out of the garden and mow the lawn and trim the bushes. And it kind of had had that kind of feel to me. Mm -hmm. Of course, as a kid, we hated that. It's like, go do all the landscape work. I'm like, no. But as an adult, it's like, okay, it's very nostalgic. Kind of throws you back to when you're younger. So I was like, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So then I brought it up to her. I was like, you know what? Let's not just do one project. Mm -hmm. How about we continue to do this together? And she's like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But she didn't want to bring it up to me and like make me feel overwhelmed. And make it be like a really deep, like thing that you have to be committed to exactly so i stuck around learned for another three months and then we decided to open up our flower shop wow yeah. and so you do have uh classes every once in a while so we did have classes at the shop when we had a shop but mm-hmm. now what we do is we go around and all the malls in korea have um small shops uh, culture centers mm-hmm. so there's a lot of culture centers not just the malls but other places have culture centers and they'll reach out to us and be like hey can you do a special flower class and so um, our busiest time was like probably back in, I want to say March and February, because you know March and February got in Korea we have Valentine's Day and White Day, uh-huh, uh-huh. which is all the days for the couples. So I think I did like over twenty to twenty five wow. classes within those two months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, now you're also in a drama. You just started yes. filming. Filming hasn't aired yet. Hasn't aired yet. It just airs started filming. on September sixth. Okay. Not in Seoul yet. Seoul will probably air in December, I believe. Yeah, it's, it's going to be on the cable network in Seoul, but on the main uh, Gongjupa stations in Gwangju, Busan, all the southern areas of Korea. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yep. <laughs> I've never heard that there's going to be It's broadcast. new for us, too. And yeah. I learned something new yesterday on set. We're doing, like, some interviews, you know, because you, you got to do interviews for promotions and stuff. Uh. And the director was like, you know, our drama, just the interview clips were, like, the number one chung or like, yeah, uh, the, you know, chung-chi-yu or whatever you yeah, call it. Yeah, we got the highest ratings. So I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. So that's pretty cool. We're not even airing yet and people are already interested in our drama. So. Oh yeah, of course we're really interested. Um, mm. So what are you playing in the drama? I play the character Brad. So I'm a, a Korean who lived abroad for a short period of time, but then I think my English is Perfect. the best English in the world. <laughs> so actually my English is a little broken. Okay. Um, so it's supposed I, to be broken. Supposed to be broken, and I act as if I'm the coolest guy in the world. You know okay. that I have it all. You know um, that's all I'm gonna say because I don't want to get deep into my character because you have to watch the show <laughs> to find out exactly about my character because I'm not sure what I'm allowed to say about my character. <laughs> but I am. I'll just say this: I am a goofball. That's okay. my character. Okay, so you're a goofball. Now, this is so. What's the name of the drama? The name of the drama, I don't know what, it's, what you would say it in English, but it's Hwansang Timing. Okay, perfect so it's timing. Like, is it perfect timing? Hwansang? Isn't yeah. it like a fantastical timing or something like that? Yeah, you know, like a perfect, I think that if you, the text for it probably yeah. is supposed to be like perfect, perfect timing. timing. And we'll the cool see. thing is, huh? it's a time travel drama. Oh. So you go back and forth to the past, 10 years in the past, back to the future or the present day. So it's going to be fun to see how they edit it. I haven't seen any of the edited stuff yet, okay. so yeah. Okay, well, K-pop and fam, I feel that if we dig a little bit today, Brian can make a mistake and to give us a little bit more oh, about yeah. the drama. I don't want to get fired, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so ask away. Yes. Because I think we can ask, let's ask questions now, mm. and then like, oh, I didn't know, and then mm. just let the interview go out. We're going to take another quick song break, then we're going to come back. I've got tons of questions to ask him, so uh, keep sending in those messages if you have any through our VLive, our YouTube live stream, or through our message board. In the meantime, though, we're going to take a listen to one of your tracks, uh, Supreme Team's on the track with it's on my girl it's insider day here on k-pop and today we have a special guest in the studio for our insider it is brian jew and uh the main reason why we have you on the show today is to welcome you to the adirang family even though i know it's really late it's not that late but it's been two months <laughs> <laughs> really late yes uh, but you are now uh one of the new co-hosts for showbiz korea for showbiz korea that's right yeah, Lena kwan to- 
Yeah, well, yes. welcome to the Arirang family. Well, thank you very much. It's cool to be part of it. It's a lot of fun. It's actually going to, I'm not going to lie because when you start a new project with any network, you get scared and worried about like, are you going to get along with the people, mm-hmm. the guests and stuff like that? And one thing about me is I'm very straightforward. Um, so if I don't like you, I'm going to be very Up forward about, about it. it. Yeah. I'm not going to be negative about it, but mm-hmm. I'm going to let you know, like, okay, I'm uncomfortable with you. Mm-hmm. Or I'll just tell the writers or the directors, like, you know what? I don't want to be part of this no- mm. anymore. But l- luckily, Lena, my, um, Sammy, mm-hmm. and Sujong, we get along very well. Um, of course, <laughs> they call me the Ajishi of the group. <laughs> it's sad that because back in the day... When I was doing shows with older, you know, people, <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm always going to be the youngest. But now it's like, oh, my gosh, because no matter how much you age, you never feel your age. Of you course. don't feel that number. You're like, OK, I'm still the same age as I, I was whatever years ago. Mm-hmm. And, you know, age is just a number. Of course. You know, you're only as old as you feel. I don't feel old. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, I'm young at heart. I enjoy living life like young people do. And. Mm-hmm. And that, I think that's why I get along so well with younger people. You know, I don't know about my maturity level, but I don't think it has to do with maturity. It's just how well you get along with people. Okay. You know? So Sounds good. Hmm. Speaking of which, uh, you guys celebrated your 20th anniversary. Not yet. Not yet. Our 20th is going to be in November. In November. Yes. Oh, November yeah. 21st. So I've known you for 20 years. We've known each other for 20 years, yeah. Because yeah. I remember seeing you... <laughs> This little girl from America <laughs> saying like you're oh we're we're getting our album get it together too soon da, 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 da. we're gonna debut right after you guys and I was like okay cool and at the time you guys were introduced to us as the female, female fly, fly to, to the, the sky. sky I was like oh so this is gonna be because nowadays SM artists are like like Super Junior K mm-hmm. they have a letter so mm-hmm. I thought it was gonna be like fly to the sky M fly mm-hmm. to the sky F for male mm-hmm. and female or something like that <laughs> I didn't know yeah you know. Um, because uh, Tiffany from the USA is asking, uh, so since you guys have known each other for so long, share uh, about how you guys met and any juicy fun stories about each other. I don't have any juicy fun stories about Brian, though. We don't have any juicy stories. Um, we never had juicy, intimate moments with friends. So, that, I mean, yeah, there's nothing really t- to I talk mean, about in that stuff. But I mean, I used to spend a few like Thanksgivings and stuff like that at his house. Yeah, we house have a lot of mutual friends. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But... Like, have I ever gone out and, like, actually had a drinking session with this dude? I don't think we've ever went drinking. We've seen a movie together. Yeah, we've seen a movie together. Not just the two of us, but, like, like with a group of friends. friends. There's, like, 20 people. We've had food together, but I don't think we've ever went drinking to see our, our, uh, I guess, intoxicated sides. (laughs) There was always alcohol present, but I doubt that we've ever gotten to, like, sit down. Yeah, we'll have, like, chit-chat with a glass of wine or a beer, but not to a point where both of us just... Throwing back shots of tequila and be like, yeah, nothing like that. Yeah, so yes. I haven't seen a side to him like that. So I can't say, like, ladies and gentlemen, when he's drunk, I can't do that. But I we do know, know that uh, actually when the song was playing, uh, Isaac was uh, mentioning when we first met each other was when she saw me with my funky hair. Their first album, he had, had no the choice. funkiest hair. I had no I choice. Too. I did too. Yes. We all did, though. Yeah, some Mr. Crazy Lee. Mr. Lee had some very interesting concepts. I respect that though about him because his idea on that was um, when you are you're a new artist, mm-hmm. a new face in the market, you have to stand out, mm-hmm. and that's why he made Juani and I have these crazy ramen. Okay, I'm gonna say ramen <laughs> hair, ramen <laughs> hair, or whatever you guys want to say it. And me, I had like this weird peacock hair. I'm going to tell you now, I probably said it before, I haven't said it in a long time, but the picture was actually taken out of a wedding picture oh, wow. of a woman's hairstyle. Oh, wow. Not a guy's hairstyle, a woman's hairstyle. wedding photo. Yeah. And that's why I think I cried myself to sleep the whole week. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, no, what did I get myself into? But uh, yeah, it was Those a fun were the time. Days. Yes. Those were the days. Okay. Um, we have a lot of questions from our listeners. Okay. And I kind of want to try to divide them up. We do have a lot of questions in the script, but I want to try to get through all and the questions. we have questions all these from... writers on the computer and the a- iPad here, or whatever you call no, it, these tablets? are all of our listeners right now. Oh. So you're looking at our V live stream at the moment, and we also have our YouTube live stream up as well. So you're seeing all these fun messages from our listeners from around the world. Okay, I see. Oh, Ajashi Brian. <sighs> You said Lisa, it first. I know this girl. She's from Canada. <laughs> and then someone's like, I'm just young but act old. Yeah, I mean, some people are like that. I have some friends 
who are so young. You know, we had that huge age gap mm-hmm. over 12 years. And I'm like, are we really that many years apart? Because you mm. act like you're older than me. Mm. And that's not because they're mature. It's just how they're raised. You know, it's just different. Some, of the, yeah. some people are old souls. Exactly. I do feel that that is true. Uh, okay. So there's been uh, a lot of messages coming in, and I wanted to try to read a few of them. So Lillian from Canada said, hey, Brian, nice to see you back in the studio. You said you used to, you said you have came here before. I interviewed you before. You did when Hwani and I came out, what, back in 2014, 15-ish? I have a really bad memory then. So if you guys are, actually, if you listeners remember that and you guys have a picture or a clip of it, can you share it? Because uh, Isaac really has no memory of that. I have that. no memory of that. And I'm pretty sure I was in this exact room <laughs> with Hwani not too long ago. Like, five years ago isn't that long ago. I can't yeah. remember what I did yesterday, so, okay. But anyways. You need to go to a doctor for that. <laughs> And I got a chance to watch. Out. <laughs> I, got, I got a chance to watch you perform in Toronto back in 2012. Uh, I still remember it so clearly. It was my first K-pop concert ever. I remember oh, wow. you performing Domino and In My Head the oh, most. Wow. They mm-hmm. were my favorites. Hope one day I'll be able to see you again. So the question is: You seem to have a lot of hobbies and are super multi-talented. If you had a chance to pursue something new, what would that be? So out of all the things that you're doing right now, <sighs> if you could find a new challenge, what would that be? Gosh, I don't want to add another challenge to my list. I feel like I've done, I'm doing too much You're already. Pretty full. I just want to sleep. <laughs> um, another challenge. Um, well, I'm kind of still just getting my foot into the acting scene in Korea. But my biggest goal is one day is to act. The funny thing is a lot of people probably don't know this about me, but I've always wanted to act more than sing. Mm-hmm. So in high school, I would always audition for the school plays. But back in the day, of course, with, you know, people being very prejudiced and, you know, ethnicity differences and stuff, I couldn't really audition for the main characters because mm. they would always look for a Caucasian face. Mm-hmm. So now it's like, you know, everything's so diverse in Hollywood or even in the, uh, in the UK and other parts of the world. So hopefully they can, um, you know, hire me one day for an overseas film or a TV show, you know. You know okay. A lot of people, a lot of artists are doing it right now. Oh, actors, yeah, no, yeah. definitely. And but that's always been a dream of mine. Okay, so kind of going more international. Global. Yes. Okay. Uh, so another one is um, we have Baby Adita asking this. I know that you are just totally handsome, but what is your secret <laughs> to look super young than your actual age? My secret? There is no secret, actually, because a lot of people ask that to other people as well. Like when you see somebody who's young for their age, you're like, oh, what's the secret? There's no actual actual secret. Your parents? There's no fountain of youth. <laughs> I do have to say it's probably my parents because my parents both look much younger than their age. Okay. At their age now. Um, and also, even though it's DNA and genetics, at the same time, it's also because I guess we live in a day and age where everything's so, you know, we're spoiled where products are really good for our skin. We can get any skin product over the counter. And if you compare my picture at my age now to my father's picture, who a lot of people say I look like, I still look younger than him because we are, you know. And just a different age. Exactly. Yeah. We okay. are, Those things are just there for us to, you know, purchase and, you know, take care of ourselves more. It's easier to take care of ourselves nowadays than back 30, 40 years ago. Well, that and also I feel that the reason why this is being asked is because a lot of people who tend to have a very fit regime in like they like to go to the gym they work out mm. excessively they tend to look a little bit on the older side because of i know the, what you mean yeah the amount of chicken breasts and egg yeah, whites. yeah they look older like the their lines are more refined mm. but you don't seem to have that i think that's probably why they're asking this i think i have a good balance where there's times where i go through strict diets okay and then of course if you know me i love food Oh yeah, he does. You know, I, okay, I know eat, that about I could eat a large pizza all by myself if I wanted to. But I mean, you have to find a good balance. Okay. And the balance is very important. And um yeah, and of course on top of that, a lot of people who do work out, like you said, people mm-hmm. they only focus on the food and the, the training part. But me, I'm like, okay, food and training might make me more dehydrated, cause more wrinkles. Mm-hmm. So that's why I do use whatever skincare product is hot at that time like oh this new cream this new night cream this new eye cream's good i was like all right i'm gonna use it all okay so you do try to kind of maintain of course okay nobody wants to look their age not yet 
No, yeah, not yet. We do when we're younger. When I was 14, I wanted to look like 20 something. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. So, uh, MT Sue 1993 is asking a very, very, very serious question What's your ideal type? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's <laughs> serious? Very serious question. This, look right now, because Lillian's asking the same question. Somebody needs to explain to me why Brian is still single. He's 100% hubby material, passionate about what he does, and he's super funny. Am so, I, though? Yes, you are. Okay, so we need this. This is very important news for all the people listening at the moment. My ideal type. Yes. My ideal type would be somebody who can make me laugh. I don't like serious people. If you're too serious, you take life too seriously, everything's by the books and da-da-da-da, you can't be in my life. I just can't. Like, you know, I give everyone the benefit of the doubt and try to be friends with everybody I meet. But at the same time, you can't get along with every single person in the world. Of course. You know, and I've met people who are like, oh, this person's perfect for you. Or even just friends when I meet new people. If I'm not vibing, Mm -hmm. if I feel you're too, you know. Uptight. Uptight or too politically correct, we're not getting along. (laughs) I'm a goofball. Okay. I love jokes. I don't take life seriously. That might be my problem. (laughs) I like to have fun, you know? Okay. Yeah, that's who I am, and that's what I'm looking for as well. Looks. I, I don't, personality. Looks wise. This personality is not what we were thinking about. Oh, phys- physical looks and yeah, stuff like so that. Yeah, so like, oh. try to think of a celebrity that's like the closest. I've said this before. Rachel McAdams is like perfect. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh huh. I, I didn't expect but I don't it to know, come out. Her so. personality. Okay. I didn't yes. expect it to come out so easily. Hopefully I get to work with her one day. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Hopefully. Um, also, this one is a, uh, this is one from one of our Korean listeners, Fly High FBI, was asking, mm. out of all of the vacations that you've been to, out of all of the countries, which one was the most memorable? Memorable. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I've I've enjoyed a lot of the places I've been to. Um, I'd have to say London. London. London's one of my favorite places that I've been to in my whole entire life because it's just like it kind of describes who I am in a way, the country itself, because everyone's so clean cut there, the Mm -hmm. way they dress, the way everything's set up, the food, the atmosphere. Um, Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm from Jersey. I love things I've done in New Jersey. I love the beach and stuff like that. But the moment I stepped foot in London and... I went to a restaurant. I was just like, this is where I belong. <laughs> That's what it felt like. I was like, this is where I'm meant to be. Okay. If it wasn't so expensive to live out there, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, I still have tons of questions to ask, and there's just, yeah, we just need to take another quick song break. So for those of you who haven't sent in messages yet, you still have time to through our Live, through our YouTube live stream, through our message board. In the meantime, though, we're going to take a listen to a song that a lot of our listeners keep talking about today. So we have Brian's version of In My Head. All right, so uh, we have so much to talk about today. Brian's yes. in the studio. He's making my job a lot easier. He's talking Am I? faster than me, which I always love. Maybe I'm trying to take your job. Oh, yeah, you could. <gasps> you could. Don't say that. What if the producers <laughs> are like, oh, Isaac, don't say that. <laughs> Get out of here. No, I don't want to take your job. Um, well, we would love to have you on the radio team, though. Like we would be great. Yeah, we would love to have you here as well. Please hire me. <laughs> That sounded so sad. Him, you heard, you, he said it here first. <laughs> Hire him. Okay, so we're going to be contacting your manager. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a lot of questions. I'm hoping that I can try to get uh, through this. So mm. Cisco from Indonesia had this really loving message that came in, so I wanted to read it. Happy hump day saying hello and thank you to our Queen Victoria Pidinim for inviting Brian into the studio. Happy to see you again and live on the screen, not on Showbiz Korea. Mm-hmm. Super random question. How's little Romy? Oh, wow. Yeah, it's very random. Romy <laughs> is actually, uh, a lot of people were asking yesterday too because I put pictures up of Beckham and uh, Ash, but Romy is kind of sick. Mm. So that's why I'm not taking him around a lot because he's still a puppy. He's mm. only, what, three, four months old? Mm-hmm. And when you're that young and you take dogs around when they're sick, they're not going to get any better. Mm. So uh, he actually stays at a doggy hotel, which is like a doggy hotel slash vet. Mm-hmm. And that way I can make sure Romy gets the meds he needs and stuff like that. Because he's got basically what they call the sniffles. And you, his, he's always sneezing. Oh, no. And he's fine during the day, but it's always when we go to bed. He always sneezes a lot and he coughs a lot. So, you know, I'm just making sure he stays out of the cold air. Okay. Even though it's getting warmer in Korea. Okay. And, of course, in the house, like, you know... Fan's gonna be on, AC's yeah. gonna be turned on at certain If points. I have AC on, I make sure I put a blanket over Romy. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, there's another question that came in here. I actually watched you on the third wave concert with Xion and Vaness uh, before. I don't know if you uh, remember this, but when are you going to be getting a chance to come back to Jakarta? Oh, wow. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not actually, I can't say anything because I don't want to. That's one thing when people say things and they have to keep their promise, or I don't want to sound like I'm a liar. So I actually don't know when I'll be back in Jakarta. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, it's always open to. Yeah. Okay. I'm open to going anywhere in the world. Yeah. And yes. speaking of traveling, uh, Wacky Cashew asked this because if you had the opportunity to travel for leisure, mm -hmm. uh, which cities or country would you like to choose to visit? So let me give you the situation. You don't have any, you don't have to shoot your drama for like two weeks. You don't have to do anything. Your dogs are going to be taken care of. As soon as the show's over today, you've got a plane ticket to anywhere. Anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. Right this moment, you're going to go straight to the airport <sighs> and go. Or even train. Whatever you want to do. So it can be in Korea. It can be overseas. No matter. Where would you like to go? It would have to be either somewhere tropical. Okay. Or one of the Scandinavian countries. Oh, wow. Yes. Because I've been to Denmark before, okay. Copenhagen, and I went during a cold season, mm -hmm. but I still loved it. Ooh. But now I want to go when it's warm, and right now it's getting warmer here as well. And because of that, I do want to go, I don't want to be, you know, obvious and say Hawaii, but something like maybe the Bahamas or Cancun, somewhere like that. Or on the flip side, somewhere like Sweden or... Switzerland or somewhere different. Okay. You know? Just kind of like a change of scenery. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Lillian says, I can confirm. I can confirm. Flight to Sky was definitely on the show a few years ago. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. One of our loyal listeners. Now you owe me dinner. So okay, I didn't even bet on it. <laughs> I'll, I'll buy you dinner. That's totally doable. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally doable. Okay. Yes. Um, We have another one. Uh, the Sylvie, 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 Sylvie style. That is the ID. Uh, Brian, do you have any favorite songs or movies that you want to recommend these days? Uh, it can actually, be an old film. there's the new song that I'm stuck on right now, and all my friends are annoyed because I literally play this song over and over again. Is the Ed Sheeran and Justin Bieber song "I Don't Care"? Okay. It's the newest single that uh, they came out with like a week ago. Um, yeah, I put this song on repeat. It's one of those songs where I wake up in the morning and I have speakers all over my house that are connected like a cafe, so I plug it in, and that's the first song I play in the morning because it kind of wakes you up. It's like oh. it's like a feel good track. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, so if you guys are wondering, Ed Sheeran and Justin Bieber's, I don't care. What about movies? Movies. Um, I recently saw Endgame. That's probably the latest movie I saw. Endgame was good. Um, but for those of you who know, I'm just a big horror movie buff, so any horror movie that's out there, I would recommend go watch it. Especially right now cuz Korea had this thing for a while. That it's changed a little bit, but they'd always come out with horror movies when it's hot outside. Mm -hmm. To kind of, they say it cools you off because mm -hmm. you get cold, or whatever. But yeah, I'm a big horror movie buff, so just watch any horror movie that's out there. Okay. And you guys, if you guys watch the I, one that I haven't seen, let me know about it because I do want to see something new. Because I've seen er everything in the Conjuring series and all that stuff. So, well, did you like it? Just from a horror fan to a horror fan, because the one part one and two I do like because the fact that I like watching horror movies that are based on true events. Okay. And once I know that it actually happened or something of that sort happened, mm -hmm. it makes me more intrigued or, or I want to learn more about that movie mm -hmm. and why those kind of spirits existed kind of. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Because I was, I was not scared. And so I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's not scary if you watch it and like, oh, it's just a horror movie. But if yeah. you realize like, oh my gosh, these that people really, went yeah. through this. Yeah. That's what makes it scary. Yeah. Jen Cruz 0109 asks, do you cook? If you do, what kind of food do you like to cook? All right. Then you, you've you not been my fan for a long time if you have to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> but people know that I love to cook. Um, actually, I loved not the past tense because I don't cook as much. Yeah, I don't see a lot of your yeah. cooking pictures or but videos I used as you to. used to. But back in the days, because I had a roommate, I lived with my cousin for a while, I had mm. a friend living with me. So... Once you have somebody you live with, then you have a reason to cook because I like to make more than enough. Mm -hmm. But when you live alone alone and you have no one to cook for, there's not much to do. So it's like, you know, I just make the occasional eggs, bacon, simple stuff. Okay. You know, at home when I'm by myself. But, you know, every once in a while if I have a feel for like, oh, you know what? I want to have a little dinner party. You know, open up a bottle of wine, have some friends over. 
then yeah, I like to cook. I like to make Italian food a lot. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, I don't want to do this, Brian. What are you doing? But we're all, we we kind of had to say goodbye. Already? <laughs> that was the quickest interview ever. Ever. <laughs> right? Okay. Um. So, I mean, obviously you are doing everything at the moment. So okay. before you leave the studio, you know, I'm going to give you time to like PR yourself. To, <laughs> to like do mm. the whole like two minute PR. Like, okay, guys. So, yeah, be as like cocky as you need to be. <laughs> All right. About like what things are coming out. Yeah. All right. And the, honestly, the honestly, I can give you five if you want. But I don't know it's what up time to- I have to be out of the studio. So whatever that is. Oh, oh, oh. So what do you want? Do you want five minutes or do you want two minutes? Two minutes is enough. Two, five minutes, I feel like I'm just going to be out of breath by then. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> Go for it. All righty. Well, of course, you guys are tuning in right now to Isaac's uh, radio station or show, you know, K-Poppin. And I'm here right now to introduce myself for those of you guys who are new to who I am. Uh, my name is Brian Ju once again. And I've been in K-pop and Korean entertainment for the past 20 years. And actually, this year is our 20th year anniversary for Juani and I as the group Fly to the Sky. And um, yeah, right now I'm working on a new drama on TV. Uh, it hasn't aired yet. It'll air on September 6th. Okay, so make sure you keep a lookout for that. And I'll give you more updates on my social media if you want to follow me. Uh, I can't say the brand of the social media here, but I could just say this. At The Brian Jew. That's all I have to look for is at The Brian Jew. Um... I have three lovely dogs. <laughs> and you have an account for them. I do have a new account. I just made it recently. It is at the, is that a underscore, that mm-hmm. line? Okay, yeah. The underscore Jew underscore crew. Yeah, and Jew is spelled J-O-O, my last name. Because they are my crew. They're my mm-hmm. family. And other than that, I also run a flower business and a CrossFit gym. So if you want to get fit, come to the CrossFit gym. If you want flowers for your boyfriend or girlfriend or just parents or family, you know, get in contact with me. Also, the uh, Strong by Zumba ambassador. So if you want to learn some of that, get at me. So there you go. I didn't even need two minutes. Oh, and also I'm a, a co-host for Showbiz Korea here on Adidang as well. Exactly. Yes. So I'm trying to keep myself busy. Which How I'm, many hours do you sleep in a day? I'm just super curious because you have so many things going on. I do sleep pretty a lot when I try to. Okay. I sleep more now than I've slept in the past. In the past, oh. my insomnia was worse. Oh. But now it's like physically I'm drained. So by the time I get home, I eat, be the dogs, play with the dogs a little bit, maybe watch some shows and stuff like that. And then by the time I'm laying in my bed, I'm just like clonked out. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you do yeah. actually get a few good hours of sleep. Uh, yeah. On my, I guess, um, bad days, I probably get like three, two hours of sleep. And on okay. my good days, wow. I can get like eight hours of sleep if I wanted to. Okay, so it is doable. It is doable. All right. Um, there's just one question that I had to read from our V Live because I think it's the Go funniest ahead. ever. Tezangum Nim says, "How long are you going to be this cute?" What? <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for thinking that. Could I get some help? Thank you so much. Like, I don't think of myself as being cute, but I know I'm. I guess I'm just a funny, goofy guy, and I guess that to people looks cute. I guess. You yeah, know, no, you are cute. You are cute. So uh, I never thought of myself as being a hot or handsome guy. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I like a manly man or, you know, someone who's sexual and, and tough. I'm like, that's not me. So. No, it is. He's just being modest. All right. Well, <laughs> you pretty much brought us to the end of our show. Okay. So I'm, we're just going to say goodbye together. Well, yes, let's Our do listeners it. wanted to listen to uh, a track. So we're going to listen to Kasuma Pado. Oh, yeah. As a last song. Thank you, Brian, for joining us. Thank you for having me. And we'll see you soon. And you owe me dinner. I do. Okay. <laughs> bye. Bye, y'all.